Hi, and welcome to The Toon Dunes, the podcast in which we take an adult and critical perspective into the world of cartoons and animation and analyze how they affect the pop cultural landscape at large. I'm one of your hosts, Nikki. I'm Nina. And I'm Dun Tootchable. I can do anything pertaining it's, uh, to cartoons and pertaining that it's uh, once a week in a discussion pod-based, podcast-based format. And, and Toochie things. <laughs> oh yeah, and Tooch puns. I can do any Tooch pun. And the sitch is that this week... <laughs> Mine We're talking better. about Kim Possible. Oh dear. Uh, we're fi- we finally got to this point. We finished it. Yay! Woo! Uh, I forgot how goddamn good this show was. Like, too, ch- like for as long as I've known, it's like it's like the perfect show. It's like the best cartoon that's ever been made. I'm like, yeah, it was pretty good. I, I, he's probably right. <laughs> Woo! Turns out. Good. I like that. I like hearing that from people who aren't me for once. Yeah, uh, extremely good stuff, which we'll get into in a bit after we go through this news. Uh, there's a lot of it, so we're going to try to slam through it a little quick. Okie dokie. Where do you want to start, Nina? Uh, let's start with our lovely suggestions by our lovely fan, Plarcy. Uh, so the first thing is that the trailer for Ellie the Ace has dropped. If you don't recall, Ellie the Ace is the kids television series that Cartoon Saloon is doing. Uh, It's in 2D and we have the trailer now. We have sort of have a setup of like the characters and kind of like a basic-ish plot and that she's just this cute girl who flies around on her pilot and on her pilot on her plane around like the floating sky islands of her town. It looks super cool. It's so cute. Yes, Sky- it's very it's very cute. Sky Islands uh, really work for me. I'm interested in this. I love Sky Islands. They're they're probably they're probably the most unbelievable landforms that I will just 100 percent believe no matter what world you put them in. I'm down for floating islands. Yeah, Sky Islands yeah. are great. This looks adorable. It comes from a great studio, and uh, it, it says they're looking to uh, multiple platforms: TV, tablet, internet, mobile. Uh, we'll see where it comes out. I definitely have to uh, keep an eye on this. Oh, and it's uh, created by a woman, which is always great in in any industry. Yeah, uh, Louise, Louise Bagnall, who's worked on Late Night Work Club, uh, Gumball, and Randy Cunningham, Ninth Grade Ninja. Yeah, good pedigree. Ooh. Yeah, this is gonna be super cute. And everybody has cute little little Irish accents, and it's cute. Yeah, and the mechanic girl looks like a Splatoon. Yeah, she's cool. I know they're called Inglings, but I don't know. I forgot for one second. But anyway, we were trying to do this fast. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right, so the next story that Plarcy gave us is a really tiny little blip about Brad Bird and Incredibles 2. Whereas we know that Incredibles 2 is happening. Like, they Pixar made that announcement a while ago. But I guess this article is just sort of like saying that Brad Bird does want to be tied to it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, apparently, like, it, uh... Hold on, yeah. Uh, the... He was asked whether, um, if he was certain Incredibles 2 would be his next project, and he answered, yeah, it feels like it to me, yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> because he just finished... Well, he didn't finish, but Tomorrowland is coming out soon, and that was his movie. Um... And he said he'd been, like, thinking about doing more live action things like that. But, yeah. Because, yeah, Incredibles 2 was announced along with the fourth Toy Story, Finding Nemo sequel, and then the other Cars entry that we have coming. So, yeah. Just a little bitty ditty update. Just solidifying, just solidifying all your hopes that it is in fact happening, because studios do that all the time. We're like, oh yeah, this is being worked on, and then like five years later, someone goes like, oh hey, whatever happened to that? And someone actually gets asked, and they're like, oh yeah, no, we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> yeah, because like, Incredibles, I think, has probably the most sequel potential out of anything they haven't sequeled yet, and oh, more yeah. sequel potential than some stuff they have sequeled. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's a superhero thing, like... Well, my concern with it is that, you know, when The Incredibles came out, the movie landscape was very different. There really weren't 
superhero movies, and I there think like I read Sp- something. There was like Spider Man, and that was it, and X Men. Yeah, that was it. And I, I think I read somewhere that they're kind of like trying to figure out what to do with it to make it different because the market is flooded with superhero stories right now. Like, yeah, and they I and they guess. really can't do a straight up superhero story because like that's not what Pixar does. No, um, like they absolutely could do that pretty easily. Like they've got a great cast. Like if you. Uh, the Incredibles DVD had like this huge like compendium of other heroes in the universe, yeah, uh, and like so, some really interesting like power sets and stuff, and, and some sorts that they could really farm if they wanted to. But um, you know, the first movie was definitely about family. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, revisit that hook, although they'll have to like get a kind of new hook because that arc more or less resolved at the end of the first movie. Like every Pixar movie has been a standalone, even if they have made a sequel to it. Uh, everything has worked on its own merits. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Nothing they've done has needed a sequel, and and including, like, Toy Story. Like, they just don't need them. But, you know, I, I'm not going to say no to that. It was a great movie, and I think that you could do a lot with it. I'm interested to see what they do eventually when they uh, uh, get to that. Yeah. I, I am curious to see what direction they're going to take it in. If they're going to make it, like, a parody or critique or what they're gonna do yeah all right oh Oh, no yeah we should move on (laughs) okay so speaking of superheroes dc has announced a new uh initiative um called hero universe design just for girls or dc superhero girls um it's a line targeting girls primarily between the ages of 6 to 12 um, they're partnering with Mattel and Random House and Children's Books and Lego. And they're going to be coming in waves. And the first wave is supposed to hit fall 2015, so this year, and it's going to include a, lots of stuff. So it's going to be immersive digital content, TV specials, direct-to-video releases, toys, of course, both action figures and fashion dolls featuring strong athletic bodies that stand on their own heroic poses. Lego building sets, apparel, books, and like a whole thing. So this is like a big marketing thing, but I guess what we're most concerned with is the TV specials or cartoon aspects of it. Yeah, uh, mainly this, mainly this promo image. I mean, Batgirl's okay. Batgirl's just kind of. I mean, is that like just like a hoodie with ears? And and really stupid wings. I think that might be a backpack. That's really dumb wings. The only like okay, Wonder Woman's costume. I actually like that. that I is, like her. That is a solid costume. I like her ridiculous shoulder pads. Yeah, I like her shoulder pads. Bumblebee's outfit, not no significant changes. I guess I don't know. She's got, like, well, she's got monster high hair. Yeah, she's got turquoise. Yeah, um, and then and then and then Supergirl is just a hobo clown. <laughs> she looks like a oh so they all like she looks like a mcdonald's okay so it's gonna center around the female superheroes and supervillains of the dc comics universe in their during their formative years prior to discovering their full superpower potential um, it's going to have a new aesthetic, which we've been talking about, and it's going to have Wonder Woman, Supergirl, Batgirl, Harley Quinn, Bumblebee, Poison Ivy, and Katana, and apparently others, who will make their unprecedented teenage introductions. Each character has her own storyline that explores what teen life is like as a superhero, including discovering her unique abilities, nurturing her remarkable powers, mastering being a hero... So, I mean, that premise is nothing that we haven't seen before, and it's stuff that has worked really well in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing about this is that it's, like, explicitly gendered. It's explicitly for girls. And I think if handled correctly, which that's a big if, mm-hmm. could be really good because, like, Nina, you're a lady type. Yeah. Superhero I... cartoons were formative for you. Yeah. M- mostly, te- Most notably Teen Titans. Yeah, and I I love me my DC chicas like yeah when my done faves. when done right they're really strong, uh, really extremely well written, well rounded uh, female characters. They're good role models. Uh, you know, 
they've also all been done terribly at different <laughs> points, but that's, you know, the nature of this industry. I think that if they don't push, like, the whole angle of, like, now it's for girls! And, like, girl kind of, power! Yeah, kind of acknowledge that, like, girls have always, always been into this shit. They've just been pushed out by this macho, by a uh, nerd machismo, which is so heinous and so ruthless at times. And honestly, um, like, this, this almost, like, this feels like... This feels like this is directly from that because, like, they feel they still are under the impression that, like, girls don't want anything they're offering, so they have to make some giant new thing that's just derivative from every other popular, quote unquote, popular girl thing. Like, it just looks like something that already exists, but DC themed. Yeah, it's like they could just make another show in the same veins of Teen Titans and Young Justice. And, and not cancel what? it. Yeah, girls or were super th- best friends forever. Yes, I was. I've. I've. Yes, that's exactly. This is all that makes me think of. Of okay, why not more super best friends then? Yeah, like I'm not like entirely opposed to this, but I feel like they don't need to m- explicitly gender this because if they just make it and they make it good, you know, then girls are going to be way into it. That's what happened with Young Justice. Like ex- explicit, explicitly gendering it is one thing. Like I'm, I don't mind explicitly gendered stuff, but I want it to be good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want it to be good too. Like I'm, and I'm like, curious. I, I mean, you got to keep in mind that you know DC cartoons have an extraordinarily good track record, like an incredible track record, and it, I'm thinking yeah. about it, an unreal track record of quality. I guess, yeah. Pretty much. That is true. Yeah, like. Like honestly, a better track. Like that's the thing. Like if it if it if it weren't for if it weren't for their animated like if it weren't for their animated content, I literally would have nothing nothing good to say about DC Comics. Pretty much. I that's mean, that's why I love this stuff in the first place is because of everything they've achieved with their animation. Yeah, and a big part of that is that it's all been done by Warner Brothers. Uh, yeah, you know, like, yeah. The, the Marvel stuff has been done by a bunch of different people, which is why it's you know all over the place. Yeah. Uh, whereas, you know, this is, you know, Warner Brothers is freaking Warner Brothers. They do good stuff. They've got a, a, a huge pedigree for animation, and they've specifically, since the early 90s, had a great pedigree for animation based off of uh, DC Comics. Yeah. Man. So th- that alone really is enough to keep me interested in it, uh, despite, you know, any kind of red flags that might pop up, because every, you know, all of them, have any of them been, like, completely bad? I'm trying to think. Um, I haven't seen the Zeta Project in a while, but that was a spinoff uh, of Batman Beyond, which is an original concept, so th- at that point, I think it trickled down so much that it doesn't even count as a DC property. Yeah, that one, I, if, like, I think that even if that one was, like, just horrendous, it wouldn't the f- affect the track record. I mean, the- like, I guess the classic corny Super Friends stuff... Uh, like even the that, challenge like, it, of the super friends. Even, <laughs> even that had it, had its old timey uh, charm to it. We should do yeah. that. That sounds goofy <laughs> and fun. Yeah, but I mean, look at the last twenty five years. It's been fantastic stuff. That's so I, I, th- I think this is definitely worth keeping an eye on. Uh, you know, they might fuck it up, but maybe they won't. Yeah, I guess we can end. Put with... that on the box. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess like we can end with. Uh, Diane Nelson, president of DC Entertainment, who says, DC's superhero girls represents the embodiment of our long-term strategy to harness the power of our diverse female characters. I am so pleased that we were able to offer relatable and strong role models in a unique way just for girls. Okay, also, another fact, uh, I need to check myself before I wreck myself from now on because, once again... I'm judging animated content based on still promo images, and that's just always ends badly. So yeah, I, yeah. I'm I'm back in the optimistic category just because fuck that kind of behavior and thought process. And I think like even if it's kind of corny, like I feel like, I mean, if it's say it's like ever after high quality, that's still gonna be super cute, and I'm gonna like it. So. I guess yeah. I don't know. Hey, Plus that? maybe dolls. Yeah, no, there is dolls. They're good action figures and dolls. Well, then great. Mo- less less money for you to have. Yay! <laughs> My money. Okay. Bye, money. Next up, we've got, finally, the opening dates and locations for when Marnie was there. We've been talking about this 
freaking movie since the beginning of Toon Goons. And now we can finally watch it. If you live in a certain amount in particular cities. But I'm going to read all of them. Because some of you might live there. I actually practiced rattling these off. Want me to do it? Okay, if you practiced. All right. <clears throat> it's coming to New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Toronto, Vancouver, Pasadena, Encino, Claremont, North Hollywood, Irvine, San Francisco, Berkeley, Philadelphia, Boston, Minneapolis, Denver, Portland, Austin, Dallas, Plano, Phoenix, Santa Cruz, Montreal, Quebec City, Sherbrooke. <gasps> Scroll down. Washington, D.C., Salt Lake City, Providence, Columbus, Pittsburgh, Knoxville, Charlotte, Asheville, Raleigh, Tucson, Santa Fe, Duluth, Amherst, Vancouver, St. Louis, Indianapolis, and Atlanta. A pretty decent spread. I mean, I get, like as always, sorry, Middle America, but I'm not sorry for Middle America. I'm sorry for the te- <laughs> I'm sorry for the teenagers that have to live there. Yeah, yeah. you won't live there forever. Maybe I don't know. Somebody must. It's also get into music. To... <laughs> it's also important to note that um, it's coming out in increments. So May twenty second. It's going to be New York, Los Angeles. Then May 29th, we got Chicago through Irvine. June 5th, San Francisco through Sherbrooke. June 12th, Washington, D.C. through Vancouver. June 19th, St. Louis and Indianapolis. June 26th, Atlanta. Um, So, So, you know, check your local theaters if you live in any of these cities or nearby any of these cities. Yeah, like I'll be driving to D.C. for that. Definitely. If I'm so inclined, I might... Oh, actually, if, like, depending on... I probably you, won't be able to. I yeah, what's do, the I closest Philly. place to you? Philly. Is DC. Philly? Philly. Yeah. Okay. Philly's like a 45-minute drive. Yeah, that's worth it. I'll take Devin. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, so we get to finally see this movie, uh, and we'll talk about it once we all have. Yeah, I'm so excited. I've been wanting to see this movie. And then hopefully it'll come out on DVD by the end of the year. And then yes. we can watch it for real because we'll all have had other obligations. I mean, it's kind of crazy because this movie came out in Japan in 2013. Good lord, has it been that long? The Dark Ages. <laughs> um. So yeah, when Marnie was there, it's happening. Be there, or be poor Don't wait for DVD. Um. And we have another quickie. Just some kind of little fun thing. And that uh, Disney has this line of Sinistory books, which are like these comic stories of various movies and properties they have. But the particular one of interest to me is they're having a Gravity Falls one, which is going to cover like the first few episodes of season one as this comic book. Um... Apparently, it's also going to be available on iTunes, too, so it might be, like, some... I, does iTunes sell books? Like, I don't know. I think so. I think, because, you know, with iPad and everything, I think they're, like, got their own Kindle-typed app. Yeah. They might as well put it all in one store. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, like, a cute... I'm, I'm thinking this is more sort of, like, where they take screenshots from the actual movie or whatever it is and put yeah, it into a comic. it's screenshots. So, yeah, but, you know, if you're, like, a big Gravity Falls fan or whatever, it's there. So, just letting you know. Also, they have one for Big Hero 6, Frozen, and Inside Out, which, incidentally, is going to be coming out before the movie. So, if you want to see... If the movie's worth watching, just go into your local Barnes and Noble and just sit down. You don't have one of those anymore. Okay. <laughs> They're all Chipotle's now. Drive to the mall. <laughs> okay. Uh, or I mean, maybe you get them out of the Scholastic Book Fair. That was always like the books I wanted were the novelizations of shit I already liked that weren't books before. Here's a real goddamn thing I own: is a novelization of Donkey Kong Country Two. Why do you have that? <laughs> it was my favorite game, and I guess still is. Probably. Is it your favorite book? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the size of a Magic Treehouse book, and like they have to change so like Cranky went along on the adventure, so they'd have a third character. It's in like I just remember because uh, Nina bought me in New York a, the novelization of Eco, or Ico if you're wrong. 
Uh, and I'm like, and I'm thinking, like, it's pretty weird to do a novelization of a video game. Oh my god, I just remembered they did Donkey Kong Country too. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear all right so next story isn't okay it doesn't count i don't know if it counts i'm gonna say it counts Th- things that shouldn't counts. things that shouldn't move are moving yes the that's muppets how, that's how i compartmentalize what we do the muppets are coming back Whoa! on tv love that felt yes um, ABC's picked up a full, lot, like, TV series production of The Muppets, and it's going to be framed in a documentary-style show that will explore the personal lives and relationships of the classic Jim Henson characters, both at home and at work. Wait, Breakups, is it gonna be like Is it going to be like Parks and Rec in the office? I was going to say, like, I think it is, and I think that would be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's that's what it sounds like. It's gonna breakups, romance, and more adult topics tackled appropriately for all ages will feature in this production. Um, now, one uh, red flag though is co-written yes. and exec produced by uh, B- the Big Bang Theory's Bill Prady and Bob Kuschel. So hopefully, they, w- they won't ruin it. I mean, with with big properties like this, anytime like a singular name is attached to a huge project, and they're like, "Oh man, they're going to ruin it," and I'm like, "There's going to be so many higher up people dictating to them yeah. every time they're allowed to fart." <laughs> then they be, like, then the, 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 these people are meaningless to the grand scheme of the show, probably. Yeah, uh, I mean, Muppets is a Disney property. They have it. They own. Yep. It. Yep. You can check them out at Disney World. I mean, I just think it's and so cool. And this is ABC, which is Disney. Yeah. I just think it's so cool that you're going to be, like, able to tur- tune in to watch the Muppets every week and, like, adults uh, will be tuning in to watch the Muppets, like, in the good old days. The good old days, was... and, like, it's so crazy that, like, the biggest uh, get you could get as an as an actor in Hollywood was a guest spot on the Muppets. That's yeah. amazing. That was bananas. That was a real thing. And we missed it. We're two babies for that. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully they can capture some of the magic. And, and I, I mean, you know, at least it'll be fun. I'm just hoping that it's fun and not doesn't get canceled. Um, because, good. you know, it could go either way. Because, like, the first Muppet movie was great. Second Muppet movie, not so much. <laughs> As I've, I'm, I'm referring to the recent Muppet movie. Oh, movies. I was about to say... Yeah, no. I think the opposite. No, no, no. I'm, I'm referring to the recent Muppet <laughs> right, reboot. Yeah. I didn't even see that. That that second movie came and went. No one yeah. cared. So hopefully this will be good. Cause... I don't want to look at Ricky Gervais. I'm sick of that guy. <laughs> yeah, fuck <laughs> that guy. I want to look at Gonzo in his crazy red chili pepper shirt. I love, I love his, his promo shirt. image. I love Gonzo. What's next? Next and lastly, I believe, is um, a pretty big announcement that the creators of Phineas and Ferb, Dan Povenmire and Jeff Swampy Marsh, are producing a new series for Disney XD titled Mikey Murphy's Law. Uh, The show is scheduled to premiere in 2017 and will tell the story of the fictional great-great-great-great-grandson of the Murphy's Law namesake. Nikki, do you happen to know what Murphy's Law is right off the top of your head? Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Ah. Thank you. I mean, joining them and working on that are veterans producer for Phineas and Ferb and director Robert H. Hughes, Scott Peterson, story editor, staff writers Joshua Pruitt, Danny Vettiri, Martin Olson. Basically, the gang is coming back to make this new show. Martin um, Olson wrote on Phineas and Ferb, or is he just like a staff writer for this? I mean, I really just know him as I don't know. Uh, D- Hunt and Abadir. Maybe? I don't know. Well, he's, he's going to be on this thing. Yeah. Also, since, you know, Phineas and Ferb is finishing, the last episode will be airing on June 12th, entitled Last Day of Summer, and it will be preceded by a 73-hour marathon of the entire run of the series which will include 126 episodes and five-hour-long specials and the one Disney Channel original movie. Fuck, that show has been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Also, uh, Martin Olsen was like a songwriter for the show. Oh, so he's great. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. And then there's going to be, after the, the finale, a uh, standalone hour-long special called the OWCA Files, which focuses on Agent P and the yeah. other cute animal agents. Uh, do you know offhand what OWCA stands for? Oh, shit. Um, Organization without a cool acronym. Damn it! It's that, <laughs> we, we, we got the goof, but in the wrong way. We became the goof. Yeah, uh, and all the images are like... If you go OWCA, they're all sheep, so I'm missing something. Yep, all sheep. Every one yeah. of these is a sheep. Yeah, He's I don't... with his sheep. That, I'll never understand that. That'll forever be a mystery. I haven't watched that much of Phineas and Ferb, so I don't get all those jokes. But I guess now we have to, since it's ending. Am I gonna have a marathon? Yeah, we'll just take some... We'll, Make some kind of prescription drug cocktail and stay up for 73 hours and watch the whole thing. Because I don't know how else I'm going to be bothered to watch the whole thing. That's very true. I don't know. Like, I mean, I, I like it, but I watching like it, the but whole thing is going to be a... Oh, <laughs> Good lord. They must... Like, no like no one, especially their target demo, is going to be able to do that. Oh, it's Polish for sheep. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's so adorable. Also, oh, Martin Olsen was the head writer of the first season, so. Oh right. yeah, so there you go. God, yeah, he's I, coming I, back. I, I want to do this so bad, but I'll die. What? Watch the whole thing for seventy-three hours? Yeah, just call off work. Be like, I gotta do this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'll be like every Simpson, every Simpsons ever, but maybe harder. <laughs> yeah, because we'll f- did, didn't they spread that out? No, that was actually constant. Uh, oh. But, like, I think I think the difference with every Simpsons ever is that you already resign the fact that you just you just can't watch the whole thing. Whereas, like, this is Slightly close possible. to doable. <laughs> Damn it. Like, I've been Majora's Mask. I can do this. It's just one hour longer. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, and that's everything for news. Uh, thanks again to Plarcy for sending us those recommendations. And you can always send us recommendations uh, via the ways to contact us, which we'll, I'll list off at the end of the show. Uh, email and Tumblr are the best ones for that. 